Imagine a city built not on solid ground, but atop water itself, where streets are canals and buildings stand on ancient wooden pillars buried deep in the mud. This is Venice, a marble of human ingenuity and determination. Over a thousand years ago, a group of refugees fleeing invaders sought safety in an unforgiving lagoon, never imagining they would create one of the world's most unique and iconic cities. How did they do it? How could such a fragile location become a thriving, powerful city? In this video, we'll uncover the incredible story of how Venice was built. To understand how Venice was built, we first need to explore why anyone would settle in such an inhospitable place. The story begins in the 5th century CE, during the collapse of Western Roman Empire. Barbarian invasions swept across Italy, leaving destruction in their wake. The Huns under Attila, followed by the Lombards, pushed people from once thriving cities like Aquileia, Padua, and Antinum to seek refuge in the Venetian Lagoon, a remote and marshy region that seemed a poor choice for a permanent settlement. But the lagoon had its advantages. Its shallow waters and countless islands made it nearly impossible for large armies to navigate. The towering reeds and ever-shifting canals created a natural defense against invaders. For those fleeing the chaos of the mainland, it was a safe haven, even if presented daunting challenges. Early settlers arrived with little more than the essentials for survival. They lived on scattered islands like Torcello, Burano, and Rialto, which offered patches of high ground amidst the mudflats. Their homes were initially simple. Their homes were initially simple, built from wood and reeds, and their livelihoods depended on fishing, salt production, and small-scale agriculture. These pioneers learned to adapt to the unpredictable tides and marshy conditions, laying the foundation for what would one day become Venice. Over time, the settlers grew more organized. They formed small communities governed by local leaders, which eventually united into a more cohesive society. These early Venetians faced constant threats from rising waters and harsh living conditions, but their resilience and ingenuity turned the lagoon from a refuge into a home. The decision to settle in the lagoon was born out of necessity, but it was also a bold act of defiance. In the face of adversity, these early Venetians chose to persevere. Their determination would lead to the creation of one of the most remarkable cities in history, proving that even the most unlikely places can become centers of innovation and power. This resolve laid the groundwork for the engineering marvels that would follow. Building a city on water was no easy feat. The Venetian lagoon presented an array of challenges, unstable, marshy ground, constantly shifting tides, and the ever-present threat of flooding. Yet the Venetians devised an ingenious method to turn this uninhabitable terrain into a thriving city that would endure for centuries. The lagoon's muddy, waterlogged terrain was incapable of supporting heavy structures. Buildings would sink or collapse if constructed directly on the unstable ground. Flooding was a constant threat, with seasonal high tides, known as aqua alta, threatening to wash away settlements. For most city, these obstacles would have been insurmountable, but for the Venetians, necessity bred innovation. The cornerstone of Venice's success was the use of wooden piles to create stable foundations. These piles made from durable wood like oak and alder were driven deep into the lagoon's muddy seabed. The process was labor intensive, requiring teams of workers to manually hammer the poles into place. Despite the marshy environment, the wood didn't rot because it was submerged in the water, which prevented exposure to oxygen and allowed the piles to petrify over time, becoming as hard as stone. Once the piles were firmly in place, a framework of horizontal planks was laid on top. This platform distributed the weight of the structures evenly and provided a stable surface to build upon. It was this ingenious use of materials and understanding of the lagoon's unique conditions that allowed Venetians to construct buildings that seemed to defy gravity. With the wooden piles in place, Venetians built their structures atop a solid foundation of Estrinian limestone, a type of stone that was not only abundant in the region, but also resistant to water erosion. These stone platforms became the base for Venice's iconic buildings, from simple homes to grand palaces. Once the foundations were set, Venetian builders used lightweight materials like bricks to construct their buildings. This reduced the strain on the underlying piles and ensured the stability of the structures. Despite the challenges, the Venetians mastered the art of constructing durable buildings that could withstand the shifting waters of the lagoon. As Venice grew, so did the need for more space. The city expanded by connecting small islands through a combination of wooden piles, compacted soil, and artificial embankments. Marshy areas were reclaimed and reinforced, transforming the fragmented islands into cohesive urban environments. Major landmarks like the area around Piazza San Marco were built during this expansion. 
demonstrating the Venetians' ability to adapt their techniques to meet the growing demands of the city. One of the most impressive feats of Venetian engineering was the construction of the Grand Canal, the city's main artery. This winding waterway not only served as a transportation route, but also became the centerpiece of Venice's architectural splendor, lined with opulent palaces and vibrant marketplaces. The construction of Venice required immense coordination and labor. Skilled carpenters, stonemasons, and engineers worked tirelessly to implement these techniques. The city's leaders oversaw projects to ensure that resources like wood and stone were sourced sustainably, often importing materials from distant regions to meet the demands of construction. What makes Venice truly remarkable is not just the ingenuity of its engineering, but the determination and creativity of its people. Faced with a seemingly impossible task, the Venetians turned their unique challenges into opportunities. Their wooden pile foundations, stone platforms, and carefully planned expansions allowed Venice to rise from the water and thrive as a powerful city-state. By solving the problems posed by the lagoon, the Venetians laid the groundwork for a city that would become a symbol of human resilience and innovation. The engineering techniques they developed in the medieval period are still studied today, serving as a testament to their resourcefulness and foresight. Venice stands as a floating marvel, a city built on water that continues to capture the world's imagination. One of the defining features of Venice is its canals, which serve as streets, highways, and waterways, giving the city its distinctive character. But these canals were not simply a product of the natural lagoon. They were carefully engineered to suit the needs of a thriving city built on water. When the early settlers began constructing Venice, they quickly realized that the lagoon's waterways could be transformed into an effective transportation network. Unlike other cities where roads and pathways dominated, Venice's geography dictated the use of canals as its primary mode of movement. This unique adaption not only made the city functional, but it also contributed to its charm and identity. The canals provided an efficient way to transport goods and people. They allowed merchants to bring in resources such as wood, stone, and food directly to the heart of the city. Over time, the canals became vital arteries for commerce and daily life, forming the backbone of Venice's economy. Creating and maintaining Venice's canal network was no small task. The Venetians deepened natural waterways to make them navigable and dug artificial canals to connect different parts of the city. They used wooden retaining walls to prevent the banks from collapsing and designed the canals with gentle slopes to manage the flow of water. To protect the city from flooding, Venetians also developed a system of locks and sluices to regulate water levels. These mechanisms allowed them to control the tides and minimize the risk of inundation, especially during periods of high water or aqua alta. The careful engineering of the canals ensured that Venice remained functional despite its precarious location in the lagoon. While the canals were central to Venice's urban design, the city also needed ways to connect its many islands. The solution was a series of bridges which became as iconic as the canals themselves. The Rialto Bridge, for instance, was constructed in the late 16th century and remains one of Venice's most famous landmarks. It was designed to span the Grand Canal while supporting shops and pedestrians, showcasing the ingenuity of Venetian architects. Narrow pathways complemented the canals and bridges, creating a network of walkways for foot traffic. This intricate combination of waterways and pathways allowed Venice to function as a cohesive urban environment, seamlessly blending land and water. The canals not only facilitated local movement, but also played a crucial role in Venice's rise as a major trading power. Merchant ships navigated the lagoon to deliver exotic goods from across the Mediterranean and beyond. The Grand Canal, in particular, became the bustling heart of the Venetian commerce, lined with warehouses and palaces belonging to wealthy merchants. Venice's canals were more than just practical. They became symbols of the city's ingenuity and wealth. Their elegant design and functionality helped Venice emerge as one of the most unique and enduring cities in history. Today, they remain a testament to the brilliance of Venetian engineering. The success of Venice was not just a result of its engineering marvels, but also its strategic location and maritime dominance. Situated in the heart of the Venetian lagoon and along key trade routes, Venice evolved from a fragile settlement into one of the wealthiest and most powerful city-states in Europe. By the 9th century, Venice had established itself as a key player in Mediterranean trade. Its position allowed merchants to act as intermediaries between the East and the West, trading goods like spices, silk, and precious metals. Venetian merchants traveled extensively, bringing exotic goods to Europe and exporting Venetian glass, textiles, and salt in return. This trade fueled the city's rapid economic growth and gave rise to a thriving merchant class. The Venetian government, known as the Republic of Venice, was structured to support and regulate this trade. With a focus on commerce and diplomacy, Venice cultivated alliances and navigated complex relationships with neighboring powers, including the Byzantine Empire and the Islamic world. 
The immense wealth generated from the trade allowed Venice to invest heavily in its infrastructure and defense. Shipbuilding became a cornerstone of its economy, with the Arsenal of Venice emerging as one of the largest and most advanced shipyards in the world. The Arsenal could mass-produce ships efficiently, giving Venice a powerful navy to protect its trade routes and expand its influence. This wealth also funded the construction of iconic buildings, such as St. Mark's Basilica and the Doge Palace, which showcased Venice's prosperity and artistic achievements. These structures, built with the finest materials and craftsmanship, became symbols of Venetian pride and ambition. By mastering the seas and controlling trade, Venice transformed itself into a beacon of wealth and culture, proving that its unique location was not a weakness, but a tremendous strength. Venice's remarkable achievements came with constant challenges, many of which threatened its very existence. The city's precarious location in the Venetian lagoon, while offering protection from invaders, exposed it to the relentless forces of nature. Flooding, erosion, and the gradual sinking of the city were persistent problems that required innovative solutions. Seasonal high tides, known as Aqua Alta, often submerged streets and buildings, creating a never-ending battle against the water. The 14th century brought the Black Death, which decimated Venice's population and disrupted its thriving trade networks. As the city recovered, it faced increasing competition from emerging maritime powers such as Portugal and Spain, whose dominance of new trade routes to the Americas and Asia diminished Venice's influence in global commerce. Military threats also tested Venice's resilience. The expansion of the Ottoman Empire in the Eastern Mediterranean led to intense naval conflicts challenging Venetian control over key territories and trade routes. These losses marked the beginning of the city's slow decline. Despite these challenges, Venice's ability to adapt and endure became a defining feature of its history. Through ingenuity and determination, the city maintained its status as a cultural and architectural marvel, even as political and economic power waned. Today, Venice faces new challenges as it battles the effects of climate change, rising sea levels, and increasing tourism. Modern engineering efforts such as the Mohs Flood Barrier Project aim to protect the city from the devastating impact of Aqua Alta. This ambitious system of underwater gates is designed to shield Venice from extreme tides, though its effectiveness remains a topic of debate. Efforts to preserve Venice's architectural and cultural heritage are ongoing, with restoration projects safeguarding its iconic buildings and canals. Despite the difficulties, Venice continues to stand as a testament to human ingenuity, captivating the world with its enduring beauty.